Hello, and welcome to the Tartan Topiary. I'm Mary, and on this channel, I always feature a book on the topic of interior design or gardening, and how this book has inspired me, or just general musings of life. I hope you will take a moment and relax while we look at De Cornet, Hand-Painted Interiors, written by Claude Cecil Gurney. Renowned for its elegant hand-painted wallpapers and textiles, De Cornet creates some of the most beautiful interiors in the world. To understand the story of these beautiful wallpapers, you must first understand the story behind the man who brought them to fruition, Claude Cecil Gurney. In the book, he begins with his childhood, and he follows it through his adolescence, college, and even early career. This is a gentleman who has traveled extensively, and through those travels, learned to appreciate and love hand-painted Chinese wallpaper. This is a company that is based on artistic practices that are centuries old. And this is a company that was founded in 1984 in the basement of a family home, becoming an official business in 1986. The company takes its name from the medieval French spelling of the Gurney family name. And in this book, Gurney shares with the reader an in-depth look at the stunning creations of one of the most prestigious and influential design houses and artists of today. Last fall during Paris Design Week, De Cornet was featured in an exhibition and highlighted some of their newest artists from the English countryside, Switzerland, and even coastal Connecticut. This collaboration was featured on French television, and fortunately, because of this week's sponsor, I was able to view all of that live. And it wasn't because I was in France. It was because I had NordVPN installed on my computer. If you are a regular viewer to my channel, you know how much I love this product. And now users can get a huge discount for the new year with the purchase of a two-year plan, plus four extra months. And you can use it on up to six devices. I will leave all of the details in this video's description. NordVPN not only guards your information and protects you from would-be hackers, malware, ransomware, phishing, and other unknown threats lurking on the internet. But it can also mask my location, enabling me to view channels and content that I, in the United States, may not be able to otherwise view. And this is how I got to watch live events unfold during Paris Design Week. With NordVPN, Daniel and I don't have to settle for just another night in front of the TV but we can elevate our viewing choices and feel like we're in France, even though we're thousands of miles away. Grab this opportunity risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee. NordVPN users will get four extra months and that's a huge discount with the purchase of a two-year plan. Just go to nordvpn.com forward slash tartan topiary to sign up now. I'd like to also thank NordVPN for sponsoring this video and for keeping my personal information safe at home and away from home.
throughout the book, De Gournay designs are showcased in beautiful interiors created by some of today's top designers in homes from San Francisco and New York to London, Paris, and beyond. The book explores De Gournay interiors in both city and country settings. The beauty of these interiors are beyond breathtaking. The hand-painted chinoiserie wallpapers, sumptuous patterns of colorful flora and varied bird life, with historical themes such as 19th century French pastoral scenes or exotic Brazilian landscapes bursting with wildlife. The de Gournay Company now has showrooms in London, New York, Paris, Moscow, Shanghai, San Francisco, and most recently, Beirut. They pride themselves on helping others to realize their dream of a perfect interior. Claude Gurney writes in the book, We occasionally have clients that wish to recreate the exact pink Chinese bedroom in their grandmother's house, or more often have clippings from magazines that they have been carrying around in their pockets for 20 years or more. Life can be defined by moments and memories and objects that can give rise to a flood of tears or remorse or joy or love, or more often, welled up memories streaming into one's conscience, places and decor that once formed part of our quotidian, or that had just been visited fleetingly. They can set off seas of emotion and recollections. This is what de Gournay strives to give. Writer and designer Fiona McCarthy wrote of these beautiful wallpapers. If walls could talk, then those swathed with de Gournay's magnificent bespoke hand-painted wallpapers must merely reveal the best stories. De Gournay, Hand-Painted Interiors, written by Claude Cecil Gurney. This book is 272 pages. It is published by Rizzoli, and it retails for $75. Are you ready? Raring to go. Daniel's going to answer some of his questions. 
while we cook my favorite weekly meal. It's a simple pasta dish, and when I'm in a hurry, it's nice and comforting and quick and delicious. But before we do that, we're gonna mix our favorite drinks. Mine's very difficult. No, it's not. My favorite cocktail is a mimosa, and it really is easy. There are only two ingredients in a classic mimosa. It consists of equal parts champagne and chilled citrus juice, usually orange juice, and it's most often served in a tall champagne flute. Today, I'm going to make a slight variation using a chilled passion fruit juice. Now let's see what Daniel's favorite cocktail is. What do I need to get you for your- I need the liquor. You lay it on me. Okay, rum. Oh, let's use this one. Um, what kind of glass do I use for this? Let's see. I don't know what drink Any is a painkiller slash rum punch. Okay. Hybrid. As good as a- Is this one okay? That is perfect. Look at that. Okay. One of the main things you have to have, it really helps to have fresh pineapple. And believe it or not, we have some pre-cut fresh pineapple right here. Put some of the uh, fresh pineapple chunks. The rum goes in there. Oh, that's a lot of rum. That is. And orange juice and pineapple juice in equal parts. There you go with that. Now I have the coconut cream. I'm going to use probably, since this is a medium-sized glass, a small teaspoon, two teaspoons and the coconut gives it a nice tropical flavor. A lot of people kind of don't understand is the nutmeg. It's an absolute necessity. And the nutmeg truly brings out the flavor in this. There's Luxardo fancy cherries. Plop it in there. That juice is unbelievably thick. Okay, alrighty. Oh my, see the nutmeg just makes it insanely good. Some strong drink, Not very strong, but it's very good. How did we meet. We met in second grade. Way back in, how, how, what year was second grade for us, honey? 1974. Wow. And the, the door opened and this girl got up inside the, you know, came off the street into the bus. And I remember her looking around like this, like, where do I sit? And I looked at her and my mouth just dropped open. And I thought, I want to know that girl. She's so interesting and cute. I really want to know who she is. And believe it or not, you were in my class. I was so <laughs> lucky that you were in my class. We only had about 25 students in our class. And we were in the same class all the way to 12th grade with about 25 students the entire time. We were in every class together yep. from second grade yeah. until our senior year. I was lucky. I wore pigtails or a ponytail. It would alternate but he liked to pull my pigtails. <laughs> and so I thought, this boy does not like me. Oh, I adored you. And for the longest time, I thought that maybe I had done something to offend you and you just, you did not like me. No, I adored you. I thought you were the coolest, cutest, most interesting person I've ever met. But oddly enough, we've just been married under 10 years. Mm -hmm. You know how things happen. You graduate. He went to uh, school in the mountains. In the mountains. Then he went to Guam. For graduate school. For I graduate think. school. So we were separated. But we always spent Christmas together. And um, We did. My first marriage, I had children, and he was their godfather. That's right. And um, your first child was my flower girl. <laughs> at his first wedding, <laughs> so it gets, there's so many between us. That, it's not true, only it, two. It's complicated. And I'm sure that's going to bring other questions like, how did we get together? It was the one aged? that kind of got away, but eventually didn't get away. Well, I always thought of you as my good friend. You were like a girlfriend. Whoa, really? Yeah. Oh, really? I was divorced from my first husband and Daniel met someone and wanted to introduce me to them and I cared for Daniel immensely really I loved him just not in the way I think he wanted me to um, she was different and I explained to Daniel that I thought she was different and that he may want to pull back a little bit until he really got to know her 
but apparently you interpreted that as I need to get married tomorrow <laughs> but he was a little bit offended that mm. I would be that forward to just lay it on the table and say she is not the one for you <laughs> and he didn't speak to me for several years <laughs> not that long it wasn't that long it wasn't that long. <laughs> this is a person that I spent Christmas with every year. <laughs> Christmas Eve, our families would get together and we would have Christmas together. But for five years, crickets. And then one day my phone rang and I looked at the ID and it said, Daniel, I, was, I thought <laughs> he's got the wrong number. <laughs> so I answered <laughs> and here we are. Things happened. Yeah, let's just say I'm to that. very persuasive. You. Well, I finally got out of the basement. That uh, you're very me. funny. And, um, you're very let's funny. Let's begin the pasta dish. You will start with a heaping tablespoon of minced garlic placed in a sauce or a saute pan over medium heat. And then I'll use an entire stick of butter and put it in. A oh, stick, I love it. But Sometimes I just eat it off the stick. I wish that were not true, but it is. Yeah, it's good. So we're going to let that melt. This recipe is also perfect for making homemade garlic bread. Just dip thinly sliced French bread into the garlic and butter mixture. And top with Parmesan cheese and then bake. The stick of butter has melted in with the garlic and what I'm going to add now is the juice of maybe one and a half lemons. I forgot to zest my lemon once and I thought I'll just do it after I've squeezed it. That didn't work out. So always zest your lemon before you squeeze it. I can be like Vanna White kind of open the drawers, like she turns the letters. Yes, I can you be my it. Vanna. I can be Vanna. Because you're pretty. <laughs> <laughs> this is one juiced lemon, and Daniel, that might be enough, do you think? That looks like a bunch. You got a lot of yeah, juice out of that. You can use fettuccine or linguine, add protein to it. Chicken. You want a little protein? Yes, chicken. I did chop a little parsley. We can put that on there. You want me to tell the story about when I ate plastic parsley? Yes. I, I was making some dish with my father. It was couscous. So there's some parsley on top of couscous. And I went to the store with my daddy. And we were looking for the parsley. Could not find it. Then all of a sudden I said, oh, there's parsley. It's $2.29 a pound, whatever. And I, and I grabbed some. I put it in the bag, take it back to the house, and we get the everything kind of going, and we get it ready. We start chopping it up with a knife, and we sit down to eat, and we started chewing on the food, and all of a sudden, I thought, man, that parsley kind of grows in your mouth. Chew, 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 just chewing forever, and it would never really, turn, you know, get chewed up. And what what I had, I finally figured it out. I had purchased the plastic parsley decoration that they put all around the food on the produce and we ate the plastic we chopped up plastic parsley and we actually ate it that was fun and, but it just didn't have any taste and it had a terrible texture you laugh it happens it can happen hey it can <laughs> never happen heard of it <laughs> well it happened it did happen and i think the funny thing about that story is that they actually charged you they for did. We, their plastic parsley decoration yeah that was fun what do you do for a living? They wanted to know what oh, your occupation okay. was. I'm just a trophy husband. That's pretty much <laughs> it. I do all the work, and he, he's just the guy I, I teach biology at a local community college here in Wilmington, and I am a publisher of coffee table books. I have written a few books and designed many books. I think I'm on, about on number 50 now, I've been doing that since 2006. He published my book. The Wallace I book. I did. Yep. On a little town in North Carolina called Wallace. They exported more strawberries from that town 
than they have in any other place in the world. Yeah, they did for the for a but couple of decades. That's just one of the many stories about that sweet little town. And that book was a great book. You, you were going to ask me about some hobbies yes, or whatever. Yes. What I are do. your interests? Well, in the in the past, I did a lot of scuba diving and some off roading, like four wheeling with a with a with a truck or a jeep or anything that I could get a hold of uh, down at the coast where you could drive right on the ocean. I also enjoy photography. He's on the Hummer. Well, yeah, an H one, an H one, and an H two. Anyway, I loved it. It was blood red. Had forty inch Mickey Thompson tires. It was spectacular. You couldn't try. You could not get that truck. Did stuck. Mickey want his tires I back? I don't know, but that was a brand of tires. Oh, okay. I do, last year I started making knives uh, with the stock removal method. I heat treat them, I cryo treat them, I design them. No, um, say that again. Norrisknives.com. But anyway, I'm pretty proud of them. I've only made about 86 knives to this point, and about six new knives are going up on my website this weekend, maybe tomorrow. It's a hobby, and it keeps me busy, it keeps my hands active. Believe it or not, the pasta and pasta sauce is ready. Plate the linguine that is lightly salted and peppered. Then add the lemon garlic and butter sauce. Top with a little lemon zest, parsley, and Parmesan cheese. You can serve this with garlic bread and a salad. Okay, taste it and see what you think. Mm. Is it good? As good as always. It's delicious. <laughs> it's like spectacularly lemony which I love. Well, thanks for watching us, and thanks for asking the questions, and we had fun doing this. We did. I enjoyed it. Go out to eat and go to Charleston, and with my wife, is my other favorite hobby. I enjoy doing anything with her. And it's getting deep in here, so. <laughs> it's not. Resonated with me. Since you, since you've resonated with me. You're quite the resonator. <laughs> You're quite the resin. <laughs> <laughs> what do we do, keep going? Next time. You know, they see. said you were easy. Did they? In high school. <laughs> yes, chicken. Squirrel. Uh, um, I'm sorry, sweet. Put your arm down and get back where you were. I am. I didn't okay. move. <laughs> Daniel, just back away from the no, squirrel. No, no. It's delicious. I've had it more than once. Okay. Uh, oh, I... Bacardi, silver, and just let it let it breathe. You know, you say you're supposed to let rub breathe. <laughs> Can Quasimodo get you anything else? Uh, with the stock removal method, I heat treat them, I cryo treat them, I design them, grind them out of uh, uh, billets of, of stainless steel now. Uh, I know you're bored to death. She's not, real, she's not a big fan of the obby. I brought one. Actually, I used one to cut some stuff earlier. This is not one of my actual best examples. Come on now. Drinks and grog and punch. Now, what might be a grog? So that, I think that was your nickname. Oh, really? Grog was my nickname. Okay. Look, I did something. <laughs> the beautiful yellow. Hey, Bobby, I love you. Thanks for watching, and I hope you will join me next week as we look at The Joy of Decorating by Phoebe Howard. And I'll also take you on the adventure of my before, during, and after restoration of this 200-year-old chaise lounge.